that looks nice though. Real talk. Wait, let me get this um changes up on the screen. Is Emerald Dream like a leveling zone or what the f You can level from 25 to 50 in there. Holy shit. You've been, they've been working hard, man. Right, Druids, Gore. Striking a target with Lacerate Swipe or more has a 15% chance to reset the cooldown on Mangle Bear and grant 10 rage. Striking a target with Mangle Cat or Shred has a 5% chance to reset the cooldown on target's fury. Ooh, that's kind of scary. I'll have to see what the, um, the other runes contesting with Gore are. And then improved bark skin. Your bark skin now can be cast on allies. No longer penalizes melee combat speed or spell casting time. It can be cast while shape shifting. So it's iron bark, like a small PS. That's kind of cool. Kind of like that. I feel like rest of druids are gonna be pretty good this phase. I don't think anyone was expecting P3 to come and come out of nowhere this much. Hunters, lock and load. Each time one of your traps is triggered, your next shot ability within 20 yards costs no mana and does not incur a cooldown. Kind of nice for I guess like survival and MM. Consumes, focus fire, consumes all applications of friendly from your pet, increasing your range attack speed by 3% and granting 4 focus to your pet for each application of friendly consumed. Last 20 seconds, your pet gains friendly each time it uses a basic attack, increasing its melee attack speed by 6% for 10 seconds, stacking 5 times. Fucking hell. That's gonna be spicy, innit? For BM hunters. Deep freeze. Stuns a target for 5 seconds, only usable on frozen targets. Deals a load of damage to targets perma immune to stun, so bosses. Or if you're fully stunned, yard. Chimera, trap chimera, yeah. Indeed. Oh yeah, imagine a deep freeze on a fat and it just bangs. Yeah, target's permanently immune to stuns. So it won't be on like a DR. I wonder if that works on fat. Bale Fireball. Oh god, not another one. For fuck's sake. Deals a load of spell fire damage each time you cast it. The damage of your next one within 30 seconds will be increased by 10%. And your spirit will be decreased by 10%. Stacking 10 times. This has got to be PvE, hasn't it? If your spirit reaches zero, you will immediately die. You can only cast nine of them. How many bolts do they need? Right, it's, it's kind of like bloatware at this point. Improved Sanctuary. Increases the damage prevented by your blessing of Sanctuary by 100% and increases damage done by your Sanctuary by 30%. This has got to be like a prop thing, right? For TV. Wrath. Your Consecration damage can now be crits and your damage from your Exorcism, Holy Shock, Holy Wrath and Consecration spells gains additional critical strike chance equal to your melee crit. So this is like a shocker in build. It's interesting. I feel like the Priest ones are so boring. Mind Flay. Refreshes pain duration, surge of light, critical spells, cause your next smite or flash heal cast within 15 seconds to be instant. So it's like any crit gives you a surge of light, but you just never crit, right? Because you don't give a crit. So this is like really awkward. I'd rather it just be a proc chance on hits, personally. Yeah, I think dot crit is maybe going to be like, I don't know actually where it'll be. They said Balefire will be discoverable super early. So expect to see some mages dying. <laughs> Imagine that you're like fully booned up and then you just cast 10 Balefire bolts and die. You're going to have to have some air raid siren weak aura, man. Like, you're on nine and it just fuck, fucking goes off. Rogues. Honor among thieves. When any player in your party crits, you gain a combo point on your current target. This effect cannot occur more than once every second. Is that the same as Wrath Hat? Go to the Chase Your Abyss and then Venom abilities refresh, slice and dice, or blade dance. Both are active, only shortest one will be refreshed. Okay. I mean, I feel like this is not that relevant for PvP. Shamans, mental dexterity. Dealing damage of your melee weapons increases your attack power by 100% of your intellect. So zero. And your spell damage and healing by 30% of your attack power for one minute. Riptide. Kills a friendly target for 458 to 498. Oh my god, it's so much. Your chain heal. Next chain heal on the primary target within 15 seconds will consume the healing over time effect and increase the amount of chain heal by 25%. Your spell also triggers ancestral awakening. Oh man, the rest of shamans are going to be sick. That is currently 250 spell power. Wow. That's fucking high. 250 spell power. Just passive. Hello? That's crazy. How much attack power? How much intellect do you have? Like 70 or something? That's a crazy strong talent. I love how, as usual, the enhanced shaman stuff is just like more passive shit to buff the autos. Yeah, but how much intellect do you have? Because you get extra attack power based on your intellect, right? 150. So that's just 150 more attack power as well. That's legit crazy, man. And they're going to have really high... Uh, cast damage now as well from spells like sharks and they get maelstrom prop that's crazy because enhance is already insane legit scared of that warlock pandemic periodic damage from corruption unstable affliction curse of agony immolate curse of doom and siphon life abilities can now be critical strikes because it also confirms and summon fell guard summon the fell guard benefits from all talents and effects that trigger from or benefit any of your other demon minions so it's gonna just be like tanky as fuck and resist everything i feel like sl is gonna be annoying as fuck Oh my god. Alright, nice noodles. Did they say anything about not allowing the Blood Moon Honor tokens to work? At the moment I'm just holding coins. 
I got a lot. Two weeks to use current. Level 50 will be new coin. So it'll work for like the ranks at 50. Better buy pure uh, honor tokens then, eh? By the looks of it. Right, warriors. Oh my god, they're putting fucking taste for blood. Feels bad, man. This is the thing I said they should take out of wrath. Fucking hell. I would never put that in. Whenever your rend ability causes damage, your overpower ability will activate for nine seconds or one attack. This effect cannot occur once. Dude, we're going to get fucking blade storm as well, aren't we? So on board, when your devastate and revenge abilities deal damage, they have a 30% chance of refreshing the cooldown of your shield slam ability and reducing the rage card by 100%. Ooh. Oh, they get gladiator stance as well. Increases damage while you're wearing a shield by 10% and increases block chance by 10%. Reduces armor by 30% and threat generate. What the fuck is this? That's a weird from me. Right, raids, let's see. All 50 or higher raid lockouts will move to a weekly reset. All newly itemized content remains irrelevant deep into endgame. Wait, I don't get that. So what, the, the level 50 gear is going to be good at level 60? Or what? A large menu of relevant content may become unwieldy with irregular lockout timers. Planning is important with this many things. This does not affect, affect Blackrock Spire. That is not getting a lockout. So... All new raids, basically, are going to be weekly. I think that's fine. I don't hear that. Biscuits, thank you for the prime, man. Thank you, thank you. Big reason for this change is to make organization more manageable. That's fine. The release schedule of the 20-man Sunken Temple level up raid. Blizzard has confirmed that it will be available on day one of phase three, similar to Nomergan. It will have a one-week lockout. We will be very generous with drops to compensate the fewer total number of lockouts. We The raid will be following the new weekly reset, meaning players will have five days reach level 50 if they want to run the raid in the first lockout easy what's this one april 4th new runes nightmare incursions take part in all new outdoor pve event and earn uh, and learn more of the story tie between mysterious dream pools and the new sunken temple raid earn new items and gain rep with the emerald wardens as you progress cool i wonder if that's going to be like a huge fucking battle on pvp servers players will cross into the emerald nightmare through these mysterious portals in four locations around the world, Ashenveld, Oswald, Hintler, Sperilus. Content is available to players who are leveling up as well as maximum level players as they unravel the storyline. That's cool. PvP ranks increase from 5 to 7 with all new rewards including new PvP class sets with 54 items and an 18 accessory. They've done a lot of work for this, man. New Blood Moon rewards will be available up to level 50 with three new currencies to collect and spend. Sweet. So Blood Moon's still going to be a thing. Sadly, no Resi on PvP set. I think Resi's a bad idea. I think they just need to put more stamp. And like unique, um, like bonuses. Discover Sunken Temple Raid. I mean, we know what Sunken Temple looks like. Players will also be able to rediscover Blackrock Deaths, Marauder, and Zulfarak with all new loot at maximum level. Sweet. Players now get the benefit of the Discoverer's Delight Experience buff, which increases experience gains by 100% for all players through level 39. With the release of SOD Phase 3, players will gain an additional 50% experience from 40 to 49. So that's gonna go a lot quicker. Does this mean BRD becomes redundant in P4? Yeah, maybe. What else have we got? Let's have a look. All right, we have got dual talent specialization. That's fucking hype. We like that. How much is it gonna be? 50 gold. Fuck, man, I can't afford it. Real talk, can't afford it. I need donuts. Blood Moon. Blood Moon updates. Oh my God, maybe there's some good updates. Let's have a look. Let's see if any of my suggestions made it in. New currency. Players will have two weeks to spend ones they already own. This is to allow a head start, but not a full ranking skip. The new PvP items include a thrown weapon exclusive to warriors. Um, Blood Moon updates. What's this? Corrupted Smashbringer with a random stun on it. Looks very ratty. Random dragonkin trinket relic thing. Hurls a spear at the target, immobilizing them for five seconds. Five minutes CD. Jeez. That's fucking spicy, man. What the hell? Blood first crossbow. Your range attack leech five health from targets. Not a lot. If I close this. Is that the only Blood Moon update? Oh, mate. Unlucky. New level 50 PvP sets. Requires rank 5, 6, and 7. Full 6 piece set with appropriate PvC piece. I'm looking forward to seeing these. Let me see. What can we see? Oh, there's only play. Well, that's fucking boring, isn't it? It's nothing interesting there. And the stam is not even that high. The priest head doesn't even look, like, good. What? The cloth one doesn't even look good. 16 stam, 16 int, 20 healing. That's barely better than what I've got now. 3 set, 15 stam. 6 set increases healing. I mean, it looks pretty shit. I think they need to put a lot more stam on, to be honest. But we'll see. Dude, why does the druid level one get extra armor and the priest cloth one doesn't? Firstly, question mark. Big question marks there. Thirdly, why the fuck does the plate one get hit? This looks so bad. Why are you putting spirit on a PvP item as well? This should be MP5. I really like Warlock isn't included in that class list in the cloth piece. They get their own 80 stam, 200 spell power. Yeah, that's standard, bro. Oh, it's crit. It's not hit. Okay. 
Nah, I mean, this looks fucking ass cheeks, to be honest. Season of Discovery Phase 3 is bringing more updated professions. Uncap the skill levels, so you can go to 300. Brand new gear and reusable flasks. Cool. Uh, la, 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 la. So we'll have all the, uh, the gadgets. The no mission and goblin stuff, which is going to be sick. It'll be like the rocket helm, the mortar, all that good stuff. New quest chain, it taking you into the nightmare and sunken temple raid. New epic shoulders, engineering braces, reusable alchemy flask and more. Okay. NG braces, by the way. Hopefully they're not trash. Let's take a look. Epic shoulders. Uh, extra armor. Decent stats. This, this is very, very marginally better than the stuff that you get. The one that you get from the current raid. What's this bit? Damaging spells have a chance to increase your spell power by 30. The chance to dodge by 2%. This has no effect outside of areas under the influence of the nightmare. So, okay. What's the point of these? I don't understand. Like, look at this. It's, it's 10 levels higher. It's literally like 7 stam, 4 int, 1 damage, 5 armor, but 10 levels higher. It's like, it's it's better, right? If you're NG anyway, or tailoring anyway, yeah, they're better. Sorry, not NG. It, I mean, look, compare this, right? Oh yeah, blah, 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 you gotta, you can't be outside of an eternal nightmare. Meanwhile, the fucking lead, um, the leather ones, banger stats, right? And then... Channels the power of the void, granting immunity to fear for 15 seconds. Weird. I was just expecting more stamina and intellect on shit, to be honest, Hemis. Not more damage. It's the stamina that's lacking on current gear, right? Like, if they have to if they have to go and put a buff in PvP that is like, you have 30% more stam to make it not, like, one-shot Fiesta, then surely QED, every single random item piece, needs to have 30% more stamina on. Currently. And then now you have an extra 10 levels also. So I don't mind the other things. I think the gear is a little bit question mark at the moment. The gear is a bit sus. So maybe they'll get some changes going there. SP needs a nerf, so fear immunity and all that. I mean, the fear is not really relevant against rogues anyway, right? Because you don't get to the second fear regardless. First fear gets trinketed and then the dual ends. So fear immunity actually doesn't do anything at all. Yeah, the, let's see what the cloth energy braces have. It's for dragon boss in the raid. Here's an idea. You make the dragon boss in the raid not fear. Instead, you make him horrify like a coil. And then you do coil immunity for 15 seconds. And then if you're sick... You can pre-fucking immune coils and you just don't make it break coil. It's a weird from me. A weird from me. Uh, what else have we got? Uncapped all the way to 300. Profession specializations and several new quests and recipes. More to come at 60. Now, I think most of the stuff I've seen is decent, but this is a big question mark. I'm sad they didn't do anything new with Blood Moon as well. They could have done some big stuff with Blood Moon um, to keep it fresh. If they were like just saying, oh, yeah, there's new rewards is not keeping it fresh, right? They should be making it so that you would want to take part in it, regardless of the coins. So I'm not too sure I agree with this one. Um, right, what's the last one we've got? Well, I read everything here, didn't I? Yeah. Nightmare Incursions. During Nightmare Incursion, players will be able to enter one of the four Emerald Portals found in different zones, which will transport players into a realm full of corruption. In this new zone, players will battle against treants, dragons, and other corrupt creatures. Players will encounter solo enemies as well as more powerful foes, which will require a full group of players. This repeatable content will be available for characters 25 to 50. So is there quests and shit there as well, or is it just killing fucking mobs like world quests? Players who decide to enter these nightmare incursions and take on the corrupted entities will be rewarded with experience as well as rep. So is it just like a one-time thing? It's not somewhere that you just stay the whole time or what? This new faction will offer items that benefit players level 20 to 50. Emerald Wardens. Let's see what we got here. So it's 150 health and mana when you kill a target that gives experience or honor. That's fucking nice. Sheesh. I mean, for PvE leveling up, I suppose. Not for much else. Requires level 20. Roar of the Dream. 14 stam. Your harmful spells have a chance to increase your spell. That's kind of nice, to be honest. That's kind of nice for a Shadow Priest. Like, real talk. I feel like it's probably not better than just Underworld Band. Depending on the proc rate, it's pretty good. Can't complain. Um, yeah, so it looks like they're just going to be little events that you can go and do while you're questing leveling up, right? Something like that. I mean, this is a thing, right? It's, this is two weeks ahead of launch. Things can change. We'll see how it goes. I think overall stuff looks good. Looks like there's going to be a lot of content. Looks like they put a lot of work into it. So yeah, it looks interesting. Stuff to figure out. Should be fun. Right, let's go.